In this video, I will show you how we can quickly set up Visual Novel Engine for Unity. First of all, let's import this asset into our project. So we can navigate to Window, Package Management, Package Manager. Under My Assets, you should be able to see all of the assets that you own. So here you can see Visual Novel Engine for Unity. Now, Visual Novel Engine is an add-on to Dialog System for 2D, 3D games. So if you didn't buy the whole bundle, you will need to import both Dialog System for 2D, 3D games and Visual Novel Engine. So let's first of all import Dialog System. We can hit Import. Once that's done, we can move to Visual Novel Engine, download it, and we can hit Import to Project. And let's just go ahead and hit Import again. All right, once that's done, you should be able to see a folder called Indie Devs. And under this folder, you should have two folders, one for Dialog System and the other for Visual Novel Engine. Since the Dialog System is a different asset, I will not cover it too much in this video, but you can find several YouTube tutorials in the documentation of that asset. The very first thing you will want to do is you will want to go to Visual Novel Engine folder and here you can see the example folder. Now everything under the example folder was meant to be a starting point for building your own Visual Novel game. So what you can do is you can select everything and click on Ctrl X or Command X if you're on Mac and we can move to Assets folder and we can just paste everything here. Now one thing that we'll need to fix is just merge these two scenes folder. So what I will do is I will go to scenes folder, I will open up main menu and then I will move to uh, assets folder and I will completely remove this scenes folder. So let's just delete and I will rename this to scenes. Before we can try out our scene, we will need to add all of our scenes to the build profile. So let's just open up scenes directory and we can move to file, build profiles. We can select the platform, currently I'm on Windows, and here we can click on open scene list. Then all we have to do is just select all of our scenes and move them to this scene list. And finally, let's just make sure that the main menu scene is at the top with build index zero, so that anytime we try to build our game, the very first scene that will load is the main menu scene. Okay, so let's just close this. And now we can try to run our game. Okay, so you can probably hear the background music playing. Now uh, let's just pause the game and if we take a look here um, at the scenes, you can see that the main menu scene suddenly contains only two game objects. The first game object is uh, Event System Manager, which is responsible for instantiating Event System and setting the Event System as Don't Destroy on Load. And then we have main menu canvas, which is uh, pretty much everything you see on the screen right now. So a background, this white background, title and a few button options. Now, what we have uh, here is uh, something that looks like another scene, but this is actually a separate sort of like a scene that contains all of the game objects that are marked as don't destroy on load. Uh, if you mark a game object as don't destroy on load, the game object will survive uh, throughout the entire game pretty much unless you uh, specifically destroy it. And uh, what we have here is, first of all, we have main camera here, uh, which has uh, a standard camera component, uh, an audio listener, as well as main camera script. And all this script does is it sets the main camera as a singleton and it marks the main camera game object as don't destroy on load. The reason we do this is um, because it's way easier to set up the camera once 
and then all we have to do is just set up the camera in the main menu and it will pretty much survive throughout our entire game so we don't have to um, recreate the camera in other scenes then we have event system which was created by event system manager and it contains a standard input system and an event system component uh, another thing that we have here is the audio manager which was playing the background music that you could hear now the audio manager is a script that um, takes care of playing the background music and sound effects the background audio source is this uh, child game object it's set to loop and the audio source for uh, sound effects is this one now a uh, nice uh, great feature that audio manager has is that you can set the fade duration between um, background music so that if you switch to another background music it will um, fade it out and in so that you have a nice little transition between um, between soundtracks all right then we have a scene transition manager game object uh, this one is uh, also a singleton and it has uh, it's responsible for managing uh, transition between scenes so you can call uh, the script contains a function called load scene uh, which loads a specified scene now it's also done destroy and load and it has a transition variable that you can define so you can choose what kind of transition you want to have between each scene uh, now currently it's set to slide but you can uh, turn off the transition have a fade slide or stage transition you can also specify animation duration and these transition objects are just a mappings to individual uh, game objects that um, are responsible for each transition and these game objects are right here so the fade is responsible for fade transition etc etc so pretty much every single transition has its own child game object now let me just unpause the game and let's see how the slide transition looks like so i'll click on new game and as you can see that's the slice transition now we were transitioned to another scene and the way this works is pretty much every scene that is not the main menu scene or the end scene is an environment scene and each environment scene contains a canvas with a background image but you can add uh, anything you want here if you want some raining effects or whatever you can do it in the individual scenes and then uh, the scene contains a dialogue trigger that starts uh, the dialogue after a specified amount of time so right now uh, the dialogue will start uh, one second after the scene is loaded uh, and so pretty much every single environment uh, scene contains the same stuff except uh, each image is obviously different so that's about the environment image uh, let me just pause this so that you don't hear the background music all right so uh, let's just get back to these game objects for a second now uh, the save manager is responsible for saving and loading game objects uh, or sorry saving and loading uh, data uh, so it has pretty much two functions load uh, data and save data Game Manager is responsible for quitting the game and stuff like that, but also you can specify a language of the dialogue. Uh, of the dialogue. Uh, currently there are two languages, but you can add as many as you want. The way you can add another language is very simple. All you have to do is go to Edit, uh, Project Settings, and here under Dialogue System Settings, you should be able to see a list of languages these are the list of languages supported by the dialogue system but these are not the only ones you can add to this list anything you want you can adjust it or remove it and once you have this list of languages ready you will be able to see these languages 
in the dialog tree editor. So let me open up the first dialog. Uh, this dialog tree editor is um, a part of dialog system. So you can find uh, how this works in detail in the documentation or in the tutorials. And as you can see here in the upper left corner, you can select what kind of language uh, you want to currently have. So let's just switch to Spanish for a second. Let me just show you the Spanish language. Now that I switched to Spanish, you can see all of the message fields are uh, in Spanish. If I wanted to add some other language like, I don't know, Arabic, then all I have to do is switch to the language and then I can input here whatever I want. So uh, I can input to message fields uh, the messages in the corresponding language. All right, so that's how it works. Let's switch back to English. And now to actually uh, make those languages show, to basically show these languages here in the game manager, all you have to do is go to scripts, enums, and here is the language enum. And all you have to do is add another language here. But the very important thing to note is that uh, the name of the enum has to match the string of uh, of the language here. So if I wanted to add Arabic, the 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 name of the language has to match this Arabic string. All right. So that's how uh, the game manager works. Uh, then we can move on to Dialog UI Canvas. Dialog UI Canvas is pretty much uh, what you see right here. Um, and it is responsible for uh, quite a bunch of stuff. So firstly, uh, let me just unpause this. We have these buttons here. History button is for showing the history and all the messages that user already uh, saw. Then we have auto button that will move to the next dialog after a specified amount of seconds. Then the exit button will take you to the main menu. Save button will save the game. And the next button will take you to another, to another dialog. Now, let me just show you history uh, one more time to show you uh, that we have actually something here. Let me go back. And as you can see, the Dialog UI Canvas also populates uh, Dialog UI and uh, character on the left, character on the right. Uh, there is also a choices container whenever we encounter a choice node. And this parent is pretty much responsible for this stuff right here. So the buttons, speaker name text and a dialog text. All right, uh, the last thing that we didn't cover is Dialog Event Manager. Dialog Event Manager is actually part of the Dialog system. Let me just pause this. What this does is basically it allows you to trigger any Unity event from the Dialog Tree Editor, or basically from any dialog. Now, if we take a look at the first dialog here, you can see that we have Event Node which is uh, triggered whenever we select the first choice here. Uh, and the event that we trigger is open beach. We have it here. And the open beach, uh, what it does it, uh, is that it triggers load scene a function where we pass in the name of the scene that we want to load. And then we also start a background audio. Another one is open house, which pretty much does the same thing, except it uh, opens a different uh, scene. So this is how it works. If you want to know more details, you can uh, go to the documentation of the dialog system. Uh, all right, so now let's just uh, go to the game. Let me just hit the next. Now we are at the choice node, so let's just select the first one. And I'll just walk through the game and I'll show you what do we have here, how it works, etc. So let me just get to the end of the game. Now you should be able to hear the ha sound effect, which is, let me just show you real quick, which is, uh, I think, here. 
Oh no, sorry, it's right here. So now, as you can see in the game, we are at Shinatsu Don't Be Such a Party Pooper, uh, which is uh, this dialogue node. And now, uh, once we hit next, we should hear this ha sound because Shinatsu is uh, just saying, I'm just saying we have uh, responsibilities and she is angry. So let's just, let's just uh, see if we can hear this. Huh. Alright, so that was the sound effect. Now we can move on to another, to another uh, scene. The narrator is saying the group found a moment of peace. Uh, and now we are pretty much at the end, so this is the end scene, we can get back to main menu. And the last thing that I'll show you is how the load game works, so let's just load game. And if you remember, we hit save uh, right here, so this, uh, the uh, save manager saves the exact uh, dialog node where we hit save so as you can see we actually uh we we have seen only the first message when we hit save and uh yeah that's just how it works let's go back to the main menu and let's stop the game so that's it for this quick little setup video i'm planning to make another more in-depth uh youtube tutorial where we will create everything from scratch. Uh, if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. We also have a Discord community that you can join if you want to ask some uh, questions. And uh, with that said, I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you in another tutorial.